So I'm John, and here's what I'm doing today. I'm gonna turn this into this. So right now the fridge is located here and that creates a couple of problems. Number one, this corner is really not an, eff an effective corner to get to. And also we wanna put in a dishwasher. If you haven't seen the past videos, we can't put it anywhere along here. There's no room for it. So we're gonna put the dishwasher here. Now where are we gonna put the fridge? Original plan was to put it here. I hated that though, because it's gonna overhang the window a couple inches and it's gonna stick out in here and make the room feel closed off. And it's gonna be annoying to get to. So you know what I did? This. Uh, there used to be a lower cabinet here and this upper cabinet come, came down here. If you wanna check out that video, it's the last video that I posted before this one. We removed this cabinet. We cut this cabinet down to lift it up. I think it turned out really nice. I'm not done with it yet. I'm actually waiting for, I just, put this wood filler on and a little bit ago I put the door together and then did this if you want to know where we are in the process but in the meantime I'm gonna work on this so we're gonna start pulling stuff pull it we're gonna pull this fridge out and see how the new cabinet fits I don't think it's gonna fit and here's why these cabinets are probably the same as this cabinet where it goes right down onto the floor where we've got three layers of flooring here. That's probably about a quarter of an inch, maybe even three eighths of an inch. I mean, it's gonna be higher than that. But these cabins are 60 years old. The other cabin is new. So we'll see how they line up. So I'm gonna put the fridge out. I'm probably gonna have to cut some of the bottom of it off. I'm gonna pull the fridge out, set the cabinet here, and we'll see how it looks. So this is interesting. Did the seller leave us some money and forget about it? Let's see what's in here. It doesn't feel very thick. It's probably just documents for the fridge, maybe the receipt. This is difficult to open with one hand. Yeah, looks like some sort of specs related to the fridge. It's like a plastic bag though. I don't know why it's plastic or why it's a, yeah, it's a bag. I don't know why this is a bag. Unless the manual is in, oh, it's not a bag. So I'm just gonna do the same thing they did. Now, we're never gonna fix this fridge. This is an older fridge, is there a date on here? This fridge is 21 years old, almost. This fridge is old enough to drink. We can finally legally put beer inside of this fridge. We're not gonna repair this. If it breaks, we're throwing it away and buying a new one. This fridge is like 400 bucks to replace, but, um, I will hang on to that just in case. I'll put it in a new envelope and probably do the same thing they did. So now let's bring the cabinet in. So here is the new cabinet. It doesn't match, but I got this thing on clearance for like 20 bucks. It's a 12 inch cabinet, which is exactly what I need. This space here is 36 inches. It's actually a little bit more because of the overhang, but from here to here is 36 inches. You need 24 inches for a dishwasher think I have to double check I'm pretty sure 24 inches is what you need for a dishwasher meaning we've got 12 extra inches now my initial plan let me show you what the initial plan is I picked this up on Facebook marketplace for 30 bucks the other day this thing here really nice piece of cabinetry it included a countertop which I have leaning behind the grill there um, and I was gonna put this up very easy there's my L brackets Here's the problem. This is 36 inches, which fits perfect, but a dishwasher, you have 12 inches of extra space. So I was literally just gonna put a board in here, make it look nice and dress it up and basically have a little shelf in there. Well, why not use the cabinet? It'll be better. So this, I don't know if I'm ever gonna use it or what I'll use it for. So just as I thought, we're a little bit taller, but I'm gonna throw the countertop on here because it might be a thinner countertop this oh, i think this is the shelf well i'll leave that there for now uh it opens out which is good i don't need to change that that's exactly how i would want it to open drawers on a nice slider oh no that's gonna be caught on there now obviously color doesn't match style doesn't match not a lot we can do about it i'm gonna paint it the seller left some of this cabinet paint so i'm gonna paint this and then I, they also left a couple of those drawer pulls, so I might put those on just so it matches. But the detail here, 
this panel is gonna be different, but it's not gonna be right up next to it. It's gonna be on this side with the dishwasher in between them, so hopefully it won't be too noticeable. This is a temporary fix for a year or two before we replace the whole kitchen. So it'll do the job for now. So I set the countertop on here. I moved it over just so I don't need to hold the one side up. Couple of observations. The color is actually a lot closer than I thought. Look at that. You can barely tell the difference. Like if you were just walking through, I thought it was gonna be wildly different. Also, one's a bull nose, one's a corner. So you're gonna see this, and I feel like that might get annoying, I don't know. I don't really wanna sand that down to round it over a little bit though, because this is laminate, so you're gonna lose the laminate part. I think we'll be okay leaving it like that. Now, why is the back so much higher than the front? Well, if we were to go on here, we're basically level. And look at that slight lip. So what I wanna do, if it's that close, I might not even bother cutting the bottom down. I might pull this to the end and see if it's out of level, just to make it look nice, if that'll work for us. All right, so now we're kind of measuring things off. Worth note, this isn't gonna stay there. I measured 35 inches. This actually worked out really well. I just wanted something to hold it up so I can back off and look at it. That's 35 inches from the floor to the bottom of that cabinet. That post is 32 inches, which was left over from these. They're, they used to be along here. And three inches for the two boards. That's actually gonna look really nice. And the fridge would obviously go further back, but I'm really excited for this. So a couple of things. We're gonna need to remove the baseboard along the back. I'll probably just remove the whole thing. No cutting involved, because it just goes up to the cabinet. That way we don't have this gap back here. Well, actually I can't remove the whole thing. I'll have to cut it right there. Um, this baseboard, I don't know if we'll remove it or not. Depends if it's in the way of the dishwasher. It really doesn't need to be there, but it also doesn't matter if it's not there. But part of this extra baseboard we'll have to put along the bottom there to make it look a little nicer. I'm liking this. Now, another thing I'm noticing, this just looks odd, how we have this and it stops. So what I might do is get something maybe similar to this and just run along the back because, uh, you know, it's, I'm not gonna pull this off. The right way to do it would be to pull this whole one off and replace the whole back. But if you saw the last video when I pulled this off, it ripped out a bunch of the drywall and stuff. Uh, I'm leaving that in. Like I said, it's temporary. It doesn't need to be perfect. Another thing you might notice, the upper cabinet being like that. I don't love it, but what I might do is put like a floating shelf across. And then these are really low. We have a KitchenAid stand mixer, no place to put it. So we might do a floating shelf like here, and then we can set the stand mixer here. But I'm really, really liking this. And then a quick, quick peek at this. That's how this is gonna look. Of course, this will be set you know, another two feet further back. But uh, I am really liking this. It really opens up that whole corner. It makes the whole kitchen feel more open. Sitting here trying to figure out why the back sits so much higher than the front. And this cabinet is actually twisted a little bit. Ben, look at the level here. I was touching on the side and it's touching on the side, but there's you know, an eighth of an inch gap on the bottom. So it is bowed. So that's not good. But I already own this. I don't know if I want to go buy another one. I might just say I'm okay with that. Um, because we can secure this in place and make it look nice. I think I'll be okay with that. So for the bottom, I think all I'm gonna do is probably put some L brackets on here or something. That doesn't look like a very straight cut either. Although it was probably cut to match whatever wall it was up against uh, originally because this is a used piece of countertop. So now that I look at this from a distance, yeah, we have to cut the bottom of that cabinet down. You can see an obvious slant there. And we have to lower this even more, which would make the slant even worse. So I have to cut the bottom of this off. There's no way around it. Now, luckily, what I might do, I already put the fridge back here, but there's a chunk of the floor missing there where the old cabinet was. This should set right into it, and then I can just go right along the floor. And that should do it, I hope. I don't know. But you can, when you're standing back, 
you can see that is obviously uh, angled downwards to the right. But look how much more open this kitchen is. I feel like the kitchen just doubled in size. I'm sitting here playing this out how I'm gonna attach it. I've got this piece, it's just a cut off of a one by eight, just for thickness. Now under here, you see that makes it pretty flush, which is gonna make us flush with that. So what I'm gonna do is take a one by four, like this, and run it along the length there. And then we're gonna do, an, so that's gonna make it pretty flush. We're gonna run an L bracket under here. Uh, a couple of those and just to give it a little bit more meat we're gonna put some boards in there to hold it in place so that is the plan here but as i was doing this i noticed you see how there's this lip here that's what it was sitting on there so now i just pinched my fingers in the process i pulled it forward so it dropped down maybe i won't need to cut that cabinet down because that's looking pretty close now we do need to lower this a little bit but boy is that looking close oh i was like is that sliding on that no it's that cardboard that was in there so if i were to take this level we are perfectly level here so we're gonna need to lower it down by well let's look at the front that's where we're the closest looks perfectly level to me we're gonna need to lower it down by what, maybe eighth of an inch. So let's see how that looks. So now we're obviously out of level here, but this side is exactly where it's gonna be. And we'll line right up with this. And we're just a little bit off, but I think we'll be okay with that. Let me raise it up and see how it looks. So from more, how I have it wedged in there, maybe a 64th of an inch up it will go. And honestly, I think that looks fine. We're really splitting hairs here, but if we're gonna be cutting that off, because remember this is a temporary countertop. Now the back is still sticking up a little bit, but we'll fix that later. But I think this is how it's gonna look. Just like that, I'm not even gonna cut that down. We are perfect just about, and you can see, there's a tiny bit of a lip, but that's it. So the plan, we'll have something like this under here, which will make it basically flush. I'll grab some shims just in case I need them. And that is going to attach to the L bracket, which will attach to here, which will attach in there. Now my one by eight material isn't gonna fit, but I forgot we get these two scraps. So I'll just cut that one down and I can put those in there. Probably don't need it, but just to give it a little more meat for those screws to go on to. Uh, because, you know, you're going to be leaning on here. It's going to have some weight. We don't want to move ever. And then the dishwasher is going under there. But before I put the dishwasher under there, or before I actually secure all this, I need to make sure this is how you, the width I need for the dishwasher. And of course, I just kind of eyed that up. I, we can go in and out a little bit. Before I actually put it together, I want to take that outside and paint it so it matches. But I'm really liking this. So I'm trying to find where the stud is in this wall. It should be on either side of that, one of the two sides. Um, one way a lot of people do is just knock on the wall and listen for the difference, but I don't hear a difference. I've never been able to do that. Another thing is run a magnet and see if it catches on the screws. And I've got a fairly strong magnet right here on my laser level. You can see it catches on there, but I could not find any screws on here that is catching on. So I've heard people take the outlet cover off and they can see, and I really can't tell. I think it's this side, but I'm not certain. So what I'm gonna do is drill a hole in the wall. Now you can kind of see where the outlet cover goes. So if I drill it inside where the outlet cover is, you'll never even see it. Do you see that, you see that resistance? Where I hit that, that means there's a stud there. Whereas if I did this side, no resistance. So there's no stud there. So that means it's on this side. So that answers that question. And with the outlet cover back on, you don't see any of the holes. So we're good to go. So the stud runs along this side. So that is what I'm going to want to attach this into. Now, we might come close enough, but there's another stud here just because we're right on the corner, but it doesn't really matter. I can just put it, if you look in here, you got a wood backing so I can kind of go wherever I want. 
I'll just put a couple of screws, probably one in the top, one in the middle, one in the bottom, right there. Another tip, see these things? These are nice, go buy some of those. You can hear that? How that sticks? You won't have that problem if you just put something like this on the doors, especially after they've been painted, so that's something I'm gonna do. All right, I need to go to the store. No, I need to go to my house. And I need to measure what my dishwasher is. And then I'd also like to measure the microwave because the microwave that I was looking at that I almost bought the other day would not have worked. First off, it would stick out like this, which you don't want. And second, it would come down to about here, which you don't want. So I'm gonna need, I took the measurements. We can go about 12 or 13 inches down, 12 or 13 inches out. And then of course the standard 30 inch width. Hopefully we can find one. I'm gonna go to my house and measure what my microwave is because I feel like my cabinets are this size too. And I don't own the microwave, I'm in a rental. I own my dishwasher, but I don't own the microwave so I can't just take that. But uh, just so I have a reference point. And then I'm gonna to go to the store and do some appliance shopping for a microwave and then pick up the L brackets and stuff for this. So I measured off exactly 24 and 1 8 inches. I need 24 inches, I'm giving myself an eighth just so everything slides in nice. Oh, hold on, I just did something wrong. I'm glad I caught this. I measured it off of that, that's coming off. So I'm gonna take that off and remeasure and reline this up. And then I'm about to move that over. So I have a headache because I banged my head into this. All right, let's take that piece of trim off and remeasure. All right, so that off, new line and new line. That is where I need to cut. Now, given the curve of the blade, I'm gonna go just inside of this. All right, and the baseboard is removed. I went a little too far inside that line and then right on the line there, but that should be okay. We'll end up putting a piece. In fact, what we'll probably do, this piece that I took off of there, will probably end up going right here anyway. So it doesn't need to be perfect. Now let's put this cabinet in. So it might be time for a Home Depot run to get some shims. I'm using paint mixers and a paint mixer. And that's not perfect, but I think we've got it. We've got flush, we've got a level, we've got a plumb, we've got everything we need. It's exactly 24 and 1 eighth all around. And then I realized while I was doing this, there's no way to really screw this to the floor. And I'd rather not just fasten it to the wall because I could see it going in. So what I might do is throw a little L bracket on the floor or something. I don't know. Like what's the way that they normally do that? Anyways. Now it's time to fit the countertop and you will soon see the issue that we're gonna have, I think. So this actually isn't as bad as I thought. I thought we were gonna have like an inch gap here. It's more like a quarter of an inch, maybe a half. How do we line up on here? Pretty tight. I need to trim back this little reveal to fit that in there. But we still have, and there goes that. What is happening here? I think I have this up at an angle. Hold on. So I don't know how straight we are because this cabinet keeps moving at the front since we're just attached to the wall. Um, so we've got that. So my thought process is to cut this back by that much. I think that's the way that we're gonna do it. I don't know. I think that's the best way to do it. And then we'll be good. All right, let's do that. All right, so to keep the front from sliding around on me, <clears throat> I cut these exactly 24 and 1 8 inch apart. Those, that'll hold it in place. I also notched this out. I used the oscillating saw to start, and then I got the last little bit off with the chisel. Now let's dry fit the countertop on here. So we're tight all the way across, but now it gets wider on the back. So I'm curious if this isn't a straight cut on this counter. I didn't cut it. This is how I got it. 
So the issue is the cabinet wasn't square off the wall. So now we're square and that's it. It might be a tiny fraction off, but I think this is affecting us a little bit. And then down here, and yeah, we should be good here. Look how nice that looks. Um, so I don't know if I want to cut this down to fill that gap. I think I'm going to go to the Home Depot where I can get shims and see if there's some sort of filler piece that I can put in here. It would also help seal it because this is unfinished. We don't want water to get in there or it'll start to bubble. So I'm going to see what I can find. I might be able to go without cutting. And well, we're not, I was just going to level it, but we're actually not flush here. And that's only because this support that I put in here is too tall. I just grabbed something that would fit to hold it up. So, all right. That's the, well. All right, yeah, let's go to the Home Depot. So I got this molding, it's aluminum and like the shape of a T. It's made for tile. Um, the plan was to run that across this gap, but it's just too big, just a hair. So new plan, my next thought was just a flat piece of metal across, but I really don't like that. So new plan is I'm gonna come in and cut some of this material out uh, that much. So it'll still be tight. And then I'm still gonna put that T mold in here. That way it'll just keep water from getting in there. I'll use some silicone with that. So that's the plan. So I'm about to make a nervous cut. All right, so here's what we're doing. I've got marks where I'm gonna cut this to pull some of that out. I did the blade here. So it goes just down to here. It doesn't go all the way through. And I'm gonna go as close to that as I can. I'm not gonna be able to make it all the way, but I'll be able to get close. And there's my mark there. So, moment of truth. So it should probably stop about here and then get shallower because the blade is round. So I'll have to straight finish that off. I kept binding on something in here. I don't know what was stopping it, but, and then there must be some nails in here. I don't know what from, maybe they just ran a saw to cut it off the old counter. I don't know, but I kept hitting those. So now we're gonna take the oscillating saw and go in this way. Might try with the chisel. So I can clean all that up with a chisel. This corner, the circular saw didn't go all the way down. So I'm gonna let that cool down before I touch the blade. And then I'm gonna notch out this corner. In the meantime, I'll chisel some of this out.
All right, that actually wasn't so bad. I think we're okay here. Might, there's a little one I wanna pull out with the chisel. So there were staples in there. I don't know if that's what was holding the side piece on or what, but it seems to still be secure. So I'm not too worried, uh, but that came out nice and clean. So I'm very happy with that. And that should have closed the gap. There we go. Closed it up nicely. That's gonna look nice. Actually, I don't know if that T-Moly will even fit in there now, but if it doesn't, we can figure something out else out as far. I mean, I could literally just run a bead of caulk along here. It wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. That worked out very well. And with it flat up against it, I've got, oh, maybe a 16th of an inch there of extra to put and to make sure it's pushed right up to it. Oh, I was really nervous making those cuts because if I screw this up, I'm gonna need to buy another piece. I'm not gonna find a used one like this and I probably won't find one that matches this closely. Granted, it's not a perfect match, but now it's time to start actually securing this stuff in. Oh, by the way, I put that down there to hold this bottom in place. The top still wants to go in like that, but uh, once this is all secured down, it'll do that. I just have a 24 and 1 8 inch piece of two by four going across to hold it for now. But um, very happy with that. All right, so I put some blocking in here. It's not pretty, it doesn't have to be. It's just so I can screw those L brackets in. I'll probably be fine with this. It's about half three or three quarters of an inch, but it just gives me that little bit of extra just to be safe. So I put these L brackets on. That's going to hold up that side and this blocking, which is going to connect to the L brackets and we should be good to go. So a bit of a problem. This is how it's going to look. We're going to have this on here. I'm going to cut that to be the corner, but look at this. This has too much flex in it. So, I don't know what to do then. I'm wondering if I put like a two, oh, that's hot. If I put like a two by four or something under here, that's gonna have no flex. But is that gonna make it so, and that's just split right off. But it is this that's flexing. So if I put like a two by four underneath, if that's going to make it so there's not enough clearance for the dishwasher. And I think that's going to be the case. So I might need to rethink how I attach this. I'd have no room to move it over. You know, <clears throat> the, ideally you would have one countertop and it would go straight across and it would bridge this and this. I don't have that option though. So if I were to do this, ideally I would have a board come up from the floor there's just not enough space under there to do that. So now I gotta do some more thinking and figuring, figure out how I'm gonna make this work. And obviously you see like that lip. I decided I could have pulled it off a little bit to line that up, I decided not to. Now that I look at it, I might wanna actually do that. Obviously that will leave a gap on the back, but I can get something similar to this and just put it right on the back, that's no big deal. Well, I don't know. That's the big question. I don't know what I can do so this doesn't flex. Although, once the dishwasher is under there, it should be tight to this so it won't flex, maybe. I'm still gonna need to re-screw this because this split right off. I don't, are you not supposed to, maybe you're not supposed to screw through shims. Either way, that it's very little but it, it's something that would cause a problem and then this will just silicone on looks like we came out of alignment too so somehow this pulled apart while i was down there screwing up <laughs> screwing up yep that's exactly what i did yeah these definitely won't work look at that that was me putting not a ton of weight on here, just kind of leaning hard on it. So these L brackets aren't gonna work. I don't know what to do at this point. So it's Monday, 
I came in here and over the weekend and just got some work done. I didn't bother filming it because I wanted to just get it done. That's when I finished all of this, which you saw in the last video. So this is basically done. Or is it? So if you remember, I don't know where I left off, but I used these. I put a couple of these on and this is what was supporting that. Well, once I had that in, I put a little bit of weight on it here and it just, they just bent right down. Those do not support a lot of weight. <clears throat> so solution, angle iron. We got a piece of angle iron, cut it down, drilled holes in it, uh, and we bolted in, into the side. I did need to raise, let me pull this out so you can see. I did need to raise this blocking up, so it's right up at the top, and then we bolted it in. Um, and this is not going to bend. So it's bolted it on the side, screwed it on the top. You can see to level it off, I threw in some washers as spacers. And then in here, you can kind of see, it's not focusing too well, you can kind of see the bolts near the top. Uh, that screw I could barely get to because this board in the middle was in the way, that's why it's not in all the way. But that was really just to hold it in before this all goes in. The reason why these are coming here, I'm gonna have to cut these off, why I didn't do it the other way, was because this is not, there's no head on that bolt or no, like no way to put a fastener on that. It's just got a square inside of there, which I pounded into the wood. Um, and that's not gonna work here in the metal. I also painted the metal black. Why did I paint it black? Because that's what I had for spray paint laying around. And I painted it. That way it protects it from rust because it is gonna have steam coming up from the dishwasher and everything. So here is the problem. When we back up here, you can kind of see how out of level that is. I thought it wasn't gonna bother me, but boy, does it bother me. So I'm gonna try something. I, I'm not gonna cut anything down or anything like that. But if you remember, we angled this off a little bit like that because the wall isn't straight. I'm thinking I'm gonna completely detach this, all the screws underneath, the L bracket there. We've got an L bracket in here, right up there and then the four screws, and the screws on the wall, we're gonna completely detach it and just go flat with the wall and see if that helps at all. Um, because that should lower the back a little bit. We'll see if that helps. I don't know if it will, but we'll uh, give that a try. If not, we're just gonna live with it because like I said, this is a temporary thing for a year or two until we redo the kitchen. But then we're done. Now I really, hate the color. Like I like the color, but it doesn't match. I really want to paint it. My other half says she wants it like this. So we're going to try it with this color for a while, but I really think it looks ugly being such a different color. Yes. I know the cabinet or the countertop doesn't match. The backsplash doesn't go all the way. I'd really like to paint it though. At least have some continuity, but we'll play that by ear. Additionally, I need to silicone this in. This is, actually in there pretty good, but it's just sitting on here. There's our gap. I got this in the tile section and then I cut it down here. I have to push it back a little bit there. There, I cut it down here just so you don't have a sharp edge, filed it so it's not sharp to touch or anything. Again, not the prettiest thing. But I do have extra of this. If I don't like it, we can just have the flat edge come out and in. That's an option as well, which the more I kind of look at it, I might go that route. We're gonna throw some silicone in here. And this is not just to cover that hole or that gap, but also to keep water from getting in there because you know that's unfinished inside. Water gets in, you're gonna start seeing bubbling. So we have a little more work to do yet here. So I'm gonna do a combination of sand what is that? That's weird, probably something like glue. So a combination of sanding and planing. I'm gonna try to take a little bit off. I've got this as a reference from what the floor level was before. And I'm gonna see if we can take a little bit of material off, like an eighth of an inch, maybe a quarter of an inch because straightening it out on the back didn't help. All right, so I really didn't wanna to have to do this. I'm gonna try and cut some of the bottom off. If I screw it up, 
I got six more of these. They were 20 bucks each. And I mean, if I screwed up bad enough, I mean, I'm sure it's gonna be so bad that I can't use it somewhere else in the basement or something. And then um, the other thing is, if I make it so it's too short, I can always shim it up. So I'm just worried about it being too tall. So I'm gonna take off about a quarter of an inch all the way around and hopefully it doesn't screw everything up. So I got the back off. Uh, it's definitely not a very straight cut, but I'm gonna fix it with a chisel. So let's work on that next. chisel wasn't really working so I hit it with a sander and I think we might be a little low and this isn't going to be perfectly straight no matter how I do it I think we are a little low in the middle but um you know all we need to do is knock it down like I said we can always shim it if it's not perfectly straight let's try and knock down the second part I did good or if I did bad but we shaved around it. it's definitely not even but if we flip this up this was floor level so you can see how much material we took off so uh I guess let's try to see how it fits like I said we can always shim it if it's uneven all right I think we're done we got it all back in everything screwed back in we're actually a little low on this side but it's very minuscule one thing that's a little annoying when you look at it you can kind of see it bows down there. That's that's just the countertop itself. Um, not much you can do about that. I could have bought a new countertop, but don't really care. We're done. You can kind of see the slight drop. I shimmed it up a little bit, but once we have stuff on it, you'll never notice it. It's not nearly as bad as it was before. We are solid. So now, why is this loose? I don't know. It's a little bit of play. We're going to have that regardless. I don't think there's anything I can do about it. I have to silicone this in and we're done. And then eventually I'll convince my other half to agree to paint that. So I learned two things. Number one, um, I am never doing cabinets. When I eventually have this redone, I'm hiring that out. That was no fun. And number two, I don't remember what number two was. Well, number two is I need to get a new stud finder. That thing is terrible. This thing, so remember we pulled the wall plate off and found the stud. So we know there's a stud there. Nothing. There it is with that. Oh, oh. Now it found it. Apparently it doesn't exist up here. Only down here. That's weird. I don't know why. But uh, that is it. So hope you enjoyed this video. I sure hated making it. This, that wasn't so bad. This sucked. Not doing this again. Of course, it's very unorthodox adding one cabinet to existing ones, having only a partial counter like that. 
normally you'd have one counter that would bridge the whole thing and you wouldn't have this issue, but now all we have to do is run the plumbing and drain lines through here. We're gonna go right below that, through there, into here, easy peasy. And that'll probably have a plumber do. And then I have an electrician coming to do the basement. I'm gonna have him run a wire up through here for the dishwasher. Easy peasy, and we are done. Left myself a little hole here last time when I was doing from this little thing. Still some painter's tape on it from when I was lining everything up. Uh, not much I can really do about that. Oddly, it's further back this time, but I did measure. We had the exact, I think last time I forgot to account for this lip when I was doing my 24 and 1 8. But it all fits in there. Everything's level except for the top. I'm happy. All right, see you in the next one.